So what's up guys, my name's Ash and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video guys I've got some meta custom tactics and player instructions for one of the best formations in FIFA 23 and one of my personal favourites uh, in pretty much every FIFA I've played. Uh, I mainly use this 4-2-3-1, uh, which is the formation we're talking about today in pro clubs, but it is also very good in ultimate team. It's just a really flexible formation and works with all kinds of levels of players. Uh, but just before we get started guys, I would very much appreciate it if you could drop this a thumbs up it's time for shapeshifters so if you guys need any coins make sure you check out mmoxp.com their link is down in the description they're fast cheap and reliable and if you use my code rima you can get yourself a very nice five percent discount all right then guys so starting off with the custom tactics for the defensive style as always i do suggest having this on balance now the reason we have it on balanced is because it does give you the best control over your defenders so when you need to press your opponent you are able to to do so and then when you want to drop off be a little bit more passive you are also able to do that as well so balance does give you the variety and the control over your defense which is super useful in the state of this game now moving on to the width guys I have this on 42 now the reason I have it on around about this is because I want my defense to be primarily narrow and compact uh, so when we have it on 42 our defensive width is uh, basically very nice and narrow and compact so our opponent can't just run right through the middle of us uh, and play those balls through the gaps basically so we're nice narrow and compact uh, but we still maintain a bit of natural width to cover the wider areas in case an opponent tries an attack down the wing but I'm sorry if you heard like a phone notification there uh, I just had to uh, turn that off uh, but moving on to the depth guys I have this on 64 now the reason we have it on 64 is because I like it uh, in the sense like you can win the ball a bit higher up the pitch than you would if you had your depth really low. So I like the fact that you don't always feel like you're being pinned back in your own half. Uh, but the reason I don't up this anymore is because obviously, yeah, your defensive line would be higher. But I notice when you have your depth too high, it's too easy for your opponent to through ball you. And I don't like that. So with 64, we can have a nice high defensive line, but it's not too high at the same time. Time with this formation now moving on to build up play guys I have this on balance now the reason I have it on balance is kind of like the same reason as the defensive style it does just give you more control over your team so when you have this on balance you can pick and choose uh, when and where you use each style of build up for example if you want to play slowly you can do that and then if you want to change the play a bit faster you can also do that with balance you really are able to pick and choose but if you use something like slow build up for example you're always gonna have to build up slowly you can't randomly decide to play a bit faster the same way if you use fast build up you always have to play quickly and can't just decide to play a little bit slower which is why balance is the best in my opinion now moving on to chance creation guys an absolute must in my opinion is direct passing the reason for this is direct passing makes your attacking players bunch up against the opposition defenders meaning you can do the very overpowered 1v1 isolation plays uh, to create as many chances as possible basically players will also make those extra movements into the penalty box so you can get off that extra pass to guarantee the goals and minimize the RNG of the goalkeeper saving it now moving on to the attacking with guys I have this on 46 the reason for this is the 4-2-3-1 narrow is obviously a narrow formation so you don't want to make it something it's not by having crazy width because you might as well just use the wide variation with the left mid and right mid in that case uh, and on the flip side you don't want to make it too narrow otherwise there's just no space between all of your players and it can actually just be a little bit congested in the middle so you want a bit of width but you really don't want to make it too wide at the same time moving on to players in box guys I have this on six this is so we can get players into the box to create those chances but we don't overcommit everybody on the team to the point where we get counter-attacked if we lose the ball as for corners and free kicks guys i have these both on one because there is a set piece routine which requires these to be on one there is a link to that in the top right hand corner of the screen now i'm just going to give some suggestions on each position for you guys it's not something you have to use but it's just something you can aim for if you're struggling to decide which players to use in each position in a form like this now a lot of you are probably looking at this team thinking why the hell is this guy using Peter Crouch up top and the honest truth is honestly I just really like Peter Crouch as a footballer you know six foot seven on this game as well obviously as well as in real life uh, but I just thought it'd be a fun card for me to try out uh, so that's why I've been using Peter Crouch but you can pretty much use anybody you want in the striker position I'm just kind of messing about with my strikers at this point you know I use Robbie Keane uh, for the longest time now I'm using this six foot seven Crouch if I 
five star skills. I'm just trying out some different players that I haven't used. Uh, but yeah, you can just pretty much use on any striker you want. But I would suggest going for somebody a bit more well rounded if you can, uh, as it does make it a bit easier to build up because they're not as restricted. Uh, as for the cam guys, again, pretty much use whoever you want at this point in the game. But I would suggest somebody that has at least a bit of creative ability, uh, as they are in like the main playmaker position of the team uh, in the central cam role. So it is important that they have some creative ability, uh, but just use whoever you're comfortable with in this position. And I would also suggest somebody that can finish off chances as well, because there are many times where this central cam will get into the box to finish off those chances. Uh, for the right cam and the left cam, the ram, lamb, whatever you guys call them, uh, you want to use like wingers in these positions. I know they're technically cams, but they play out more like wingers uh, at most times. So you do want to use wingers in these positions, I think. Players with pace, uh, players with good dribbling, players that can beat a man, basically. Uh, but it's also important that these players can finish off a chance because much like the central cam, you will often find these players in the box uh, in those shooting positions. So you don't want them scuffing and ruining every chance you have. Now, moving on to the two CDMs, guys, I go for a balance between the two I go for a more defensive minded player in Casemiro in the left CDM spot this is somebody that will stay back at all times and be as defensive as possible so I would suggest somebody with a medium high work rate if you can get it as you get that maximum contribution in the defense and they are not too bothered about going forward and then in the other CDM spot I like to use a more box to box style player this is somebody that will attack and defend in the team so I would suggest somebody with a high high work rate if you can get it as you you get that maximum contribution in both the attack and the defense but just ensure that this player has a nice well-rounded card uh, as for the fullbacks guys you can pretty much use whoever you want you can use two defensive fullbacks if you like or two attacking fullbacks it doesn't really matter just pick and choose which ones you want as for the center backs these just need to be full meta players that are obviously very fast medium high work rate decent physicality and height you know the types of players you want to be using in these positions uh, and as for the goalkeeper guys really does not matter as for the player instructions guys I'm just going to go through these very quickly because I don't want the video to be crazy long today uh, so on the striker we have him on stay central this is because we don't want him drifting off into those wider areas he is our striker so we do actually want him to maintain those central positions so he is of most use to us uh, he's not going to be doing much good for us out on the wing especially since he is our only striker moving on to the cam guys we just completely leave him alone we don't touch him because he has a bit of a free roll and we don't want to restrict him all that much really not too much to Say about the cam. Uh, for the ram and the lamb, we have them both on comeback on defense. This is so we have a bit of a better defensive shape when we don't have the ball. These players can be a little bit lazy when they're on basic defensive support and don't fill in the correct positions. But when you put them on comeback on defense, it ensures that they sit in a really nice position, which does not give your opponent much space to attack in. Uh, but other than that, we leave them alone because again, we don't really want to restrict them. Now for both CDMs, guys, I know they're different types of players, but I have them both on stay back while attacking cut passing lanes and cover center now I have them on stay back while attacking so I can pick and choose when I want to send them forward but they're going to stay back while default to ensure that we are as defensively sound as possible but for example Modric is my box-to-box -box player if I want to take him on a run forward I will just run him forward or trigger a run with L1 uh, but it just means he has a better natural position uh, when we are going forward and doesn't always overcommit. we also have them on cut passing lanes so they're always looking to intercept those passes uh, and break up the play which is nice and then we also have them on cover center so they do defend those central areas uh, as for both the fullbacks guys we have them on stay back while attacking and overlap we have them on stay back while attacking so our back four is always intact uh, and our opponent can't just throw ballers down the line but we have them on the overlap run type so when we do send them on a run forward using l1 or the d-pad tactics to trigger attacking fullbacks they will make the overlapping runs to add extra width that is how i like to attack with my fullbacks nowadays i just trigger the d-pad set when I want to send them forward. As for the centre backs and the keeper guys, these are on the default settings and I do not touch them. But yeah, they are my custom tactics and player instructions for the 4231. If you have enjoyed or found this useful, please be sure to drop this a like, sub to the channel if you are new, and don't forget to turn on notifications. And with all that aside, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you all in the next one.